Chapter 362 The Secret Deed Ritual A male voice. Is it Mr. Hanged Man or Little Son? Klein looked out the window at the gloomy sky, got up, and went into the bathroom next door. He locked the door, took four steps counterclockwise, and arrived above the gray fog. Within that mysterious space, a towering, ancient palace quietly stood. The illusory male voice echoed in a stacked, continuous manner. Klein glanced at it and confirmed that the prayer was from Little Son. He sat in the fool's seat and stretched out his right hand, emanating his spirituality to touch the corresponding crimson star. Suddenly, the voice became clear and layered, and Klein quickly figured out what the son was talking about. The former captain of the exploration team, who had seen Amon, suddenly lost control and strangely penetrated through the seal, arriving at his room. Fortunately, the City of Silver took this matter seriously and had been constantly prepared for it. Otherwise, it would have led to a tragedy. The son believes that it's impossible that there was no reason for the man's loss of control. He came up with two possibilities. One was that his own Beyonder pathway met the requirements of being the ancient sun god's descendant, and the other possibility was that the man might have sensed the tarot gathering in Mr. Fool's secret pool. If it were the former, he wouldn't have waited until today and waited until the end of the tarot gathering before losing control. The latter reason has a greater probability. Hmm, this is the first time I've encountered someone who can sense the matters regarding the Grey Fog. That Amon is very scary. It's no wonder their family was known as the Blasphemers during the Fourth Epoch. Even their last names are taboo. Klein subconsciously looked at the Crimson Star and the corresponding supplicant. He carefully observed the blurry image of Little Sun to see if there was anything abnormal with him. Klein believed that Amon wouldn't be so easily eliminated, even if it was as the chief of the City of Silver had said, that his body wasn't his main body. It didn't make it any easier to eliminate him. The only possibility is that the powerhouses in the City of Silver have been using mystical items to monitor him. But is that even possible? When he decided to let the former leader of the exploration team lose control and silently penetrate through the seal, he definitely had a plan in place. In the midst of his thoughts, Klein's eyes suddenly froze as he looked at the prayer scene. Entwined on the indistinct body of the sun was a translucent and illusory figure. He had hands and feet, but he was like a python, twisting around the sun while his head rested behind the sun's head. In the blurred image, he was wearing a black classical robe, a pointed hat, and a crystal monocle. The sun didn't notice any of this. Klein almost drew a cold gasp, shocked at the strange means that were available to that entity. He vaguely understood the other party's intention. By residing in the spirit body of the sun, he is waiting for the next tarot gathering, allowing him to sneak above the gray fog, like a virus or a Trojan horse. When that happens... My control over this mysterious space might be snatched away. He's truly a blasphemer. Fortunately, Little Son is rather naive and straightforward, so he immediately reported this to me. Through the corresponding crimson stars and the power of the gray fog, I was able to discover his peculiar state. Klein drew a breath and tried to calm himself. At that moment, he had to respond. He had to quickly think of a way to get Amon out of the sun or temporarily expel the sun out of the tarot gathering. Looking at himself, from his beyonder powers of magician, clown, and seer, to Azik's copper whistle, the dark emperor card, the all-black eye, the sun brush, the biological poison bottle, and so on, Klein couldn't find a way to deal with Amon. Amon's sequence is definitely above sequence 4, and the means available to him must be sufficiently strange. To be able to escape from the City of Silver's mystical artifacts and powerful demon hunters, it means that he isn't something which can be easily eliminated with ordinary objects or powers. After thinking for a moment and looking around, Klein discovered there was only one possibility of eliminating Amon. The Grey Fog. This mysterious space. I have to think of a way to pry its power away. The sacrifice and bestowment ritual from before are examples. With this train of thought, Klein turned his gaze to the Book of Secrets. This mysticism book, which originated from the ancient shaman King Klarman, 
recorded many mysterious rituals that required help from the primitive moon. Klein, who had been reading it before, vaguely remembered that a few of them were suitable for such a scenario. Of course, it was unknown what changes he would have to make after directing it towards the fool. He could only keep his hopes up and try his best. As Klein flipped through the book, his eyes stopped at a ritual. Blood Moon Sacrifice This ritualistic magic was clearly different from the simple ones that Klein had learned before, and it used the element of a secret deed. The process was to use a material rich in spirituality, preferably the blood of a beyonder, to write the honorable name of the target of the secret deed on an animal hide, and to draw the corresponding symbols and magic labels. If necessary, the specific circumstances of a given time and place also had to be taken into account. When this was done, the ritual host would set up the altar, pick up the piece of hide, and repeat the honorable name, letting their spirituality to seep into the hide, gradually spreading it out, little by little, to form a hidden bond with the corresponding great being and obtaining the corresponding spiritual experience or help. The final outcome of this ritual was unknown. It all depended on what the hidden or great being bestowed. Or rather, according to one's characteristics, the knowledge and power one could gain through that secret bond were also different. This kind of rather vague and subjective ritual gave Klein enough freedom to modify and manipulate it. If he had assumed the stance of forcefully eliminating Amon from the beginning, then Amon would have certainly resisted and created a dangerous accident. If the target of the secret deed were the true creator or the hidden sage, it's normal for the ritual to end in madness. Klein mumbled as he conjured a pen and paper and began to modify the blood moon sacrifice to turn it into a secret deed ritual that belonged to the fool. First, he replaced the honorable name with the three sentences of King of Yellow and Black. Then, he replaced the symbolic symbol with the one behind the seat of the fool. It was a unique symbol made up of a part of the hidden pupilless eye and the contorted lines. The third was to design the corresponding magic label according to the symbols and his mysticism knowledge. This was the most difficult step. Any mistakes would cause the entire ritual to produce unpredictable developments. Lastly, he had to modify the layout of the altar to make it closer to the fool and to the king of yellow and black. After busying himself for quite a while, Klein had a new secret deed ritual, but he was unsure if it would work. He examined it over and over again and after confirming that there were no mistakes, he emanated his spirituality and heavily replied to Little Sun. I'm aware. I have something to task you with. Let's see if this ritual works. The Sun, Derek, suddenly woke up from his dreamless slumber. Before his eyes were the boundless grey fog and the lofty fool. His ears echoed with bits of illusory and distant words. He knew that Mr. Fool would occasionally ask the members of the Tarot Club to make small attempts as if to verify something. He wasn't surprised by this, and he immediately sat up and began to search for a monster hide, exotic herbs, and other objects. As for the spiritual materials described in the ceremony, Derek didn't waste time heading to the spire or the underground market to buy them. He picked up the axe of Hurricane and sliced a tiny wound in his arm. Silently, he used his own blood as ink, and he wrote the name of the fool and its corresponding symbols and magic labels on the pitted monster hide. After a while, he put down the quill that was stained with blood. He saw many mysterious symbols on the hide, and the colors were bright red and had an indescribable hint of demonic dealings. After dealing with the wound on his arm, the pale-faced Derek quickly finished setting up the altar. He picked up the blood-red word and all kinds of terrifying symbols from the hide and held it tightly in his hand. He looked at the flickering candle flame in front of him, closed his eyes, lowered his head, and repeatedly recited the honorable names of the fool. The fool that doesn't belong to this era. The mysterious ruler above the gray fog. The king of yellow and black who wields good luck. Derek's spirituality slowly flowed out and infused the hide, and the words in Jotun and the magic symbols on it quickly brightened. It was a startling crimson color. At that moment, he, who had already entered into a cogitation state, was only feeling his psyche gradually dissipate as it floated to an immeasurable height, coming into contact with the grayish-white fog and the hidden great being. Above the gray fog, inside the palace that looked like a giant's residence, 
noticing that the sun had not shown any signs of delay in preparing the ritual. Klein chose to wait there above the gray fog. Suddenly, he felt the entire mysterious space start to tremble. That motionless, grayish-white fog started to flow. The crimson star corresponding to the sun shined brightly and emitted illusory rays of light like the tide. These countless rays of light condensed into a blurry figure of the sun. He was in a supplicating position with his eyes closed and his head lowered, waiting for the moment when he could bond with the great being and gain a miraculous spiritual experience. The translucent figure on his body was still tightly coiled like a python, but its head was already tilted back as it looked up. The crystal monocle it wore flashed dimly. He's searching for the subtle, hidden connection. He should have recognized that this is just the secret deed ritual, but he didn't do anything to stop it. Is he trying to find the connection through it? Klein suddenly came to this realization and felt that the gray fog and the mysterious space above it simultaneously rippling with power. However, for the time being, Klein couldn't combine these forces with his own spirituality to create a beyonder effect that could exercise the evil spirit, unless there was another corresponding ritual. Clearly, this was impossible. He couldn't maintain two rituals simultaneously. Klein's eyes quickly swept the area in front of him, and his gaze stopped at the sun brush.